Hello everyone and welcome back to Modern Warships with Terry. Today we'll have a look at a kind of different type of submarine. We're going to have a look at the Kursk, the the tier 2 ballistic missile submarine. This ship actually existed and um, existed is here the, the case because, well, she's rather infamous for having sunk. But we'll get to that in a minute. So what separates a ballistic missile submarine from, let's say, an attack submarine, as we've uh, we've looked at, at the Barracuda earlier? Uh, ballistic missile submarines are ship killers. So the Oscar II class were specifically designed to attack and destroy uh, US Navy carrier groups. They had ballistic missiles, so not um, or cruise missiles, so not not uh, uh, not like the, the the part of the submarines that are that are part of the nuclear triad, which are expected to be hiding and in case of a nuclear confrontation, be launching uh, be launching missiles uh, against land targets. These things were meant to be attacking naval targets, and it's also not an attack submarine in that it would be fighting other sub hunting and fighting other submarines, but it was meant to be. Uh, attacking surface ships and as such this was one of the last designs of uh, of the Soviet Navy and was actually the first ship completed after the breakdown of the Soviet Union for the Russian Navy. Now she was tragically lost during an exercise when one of her training torpedoes was it's not 100 percent sure what happened either the crew was mishandling it because they were uh, not receiving the right manuals and training for these things or uh, it was a fault in in the construction because the training torpedoes were not actually man manufactured to the same standards as life weapons but what happened was that uh, some of the propellant uh, was leaking and the torpedo exploded which caused uh, secondary explosions and caused the submarine to sink down to a depth of over 100 meters and uh, she went down with all of her crew. So in game, what does that, what is, how, how does this thing play different from uh, from hunter killers like the Barracuda or I think the, I'm not sure about the Seawolf, I'm actually gonna have to check. This thing is uh, significantly slower and less maneuverable than the other ships. So if we compare to example here, we see that um, uh, the maneuverability is less and this, this, the speed is down as well. In general, you won't be able to dodge torpedoes quite well in these ships. You will be more on a long range um, kind of mission. She does have a lot of weapon systems. So on top of the two torpedo launchers, you actually get a twin missile launcher. Uh, you kind of see them here on the side, the, the missile silos. Um, yep, there we can get, get them to open. So you actually do get the cruise missile launchers on top of uh, on top of the torpedo launchers as well, and you'll be playing this ship at long range, um, and you'll be playing it kind of between submerged and and surface, because obviously you're going to be trying to use your missiles as much as possible, but you don't have any defense like there's no uh, there's no anti-air defense of any sorts whatsoever. Uh, but uh, which means you are going to have to to use the submerging capability of these things uh, and in order to defend yourself. But if you, for example, compare the O2 capacity uh, between these two, you're actually on a lower scale than uh, than the attack sub. So you're not expected to be staying underwater all of the time. In fact, I'm actually staying on the surface a lot with this ship and using it as a long-range missile spamming torpedo launching ship. And then submerging when needed, preserving the uh, the O2. Now I am running the P800 Onyx here. Uh, you could obviously, you know, use like, the infamous Chinese CJ20s if you so if we're so inclined. But I'm I'm kind of happy with the Onyx, uh, and I'm I'm using two of the guided torpedoes rather than one uh, super cavitating and one guided torpedo because I just prefer the guided torpedoes in general. Uh, Upgrade-wise, I, I have her relatively far upgraded, and you probably really want that uh, because the um, yeah, like I mentioned, she is reasonably slow and reasonably poorly maneuverable, so it becomes often a much more of a tactical gameplay. She is very very good against carriers. <laughs> 
obviously with two torpedo launchers, like all of the subs here, but um, she also has the capability to actually fight on the surface with these cruise missiles that is not to be underestimated. So, um, let's have a look at some gameplay, shall we? Our first battle takes place on the storm map. Which is a bit unfortunate map for, for these sort of ships because, well, you don't have any concealment except for the, the oil rigs in the middle and she's not quick enough to actually get there. And there are two carriers on the enemy team. Uh, carriers obviously being a huge, huge problem. So generally you want to try and keep your distance a little bit, uh, let other ships do the scouting, hang back. But yeah, in rough seas she will do about 11 knots, which is not a lot. And there's the first ca carrier air group coming in. We are spotted. So we're going to get our, um, going to get our to uh, missiles and torpedoes away and then um, submerge. Now you will notice that the missiles are now inactive, which is, be well, it's because we're underwater. But um, I just wanted to make sure that I am not getting hit by the initial, uh, by the initial air group coming in. And uh, now that this threat seems to have passed, I'm going to get up to the surface again. Because I definitely do want to use my cruise missiles. And uh, it looks like, as long as no one's shooting at me, okay, there are some torpedoes coming in. You, you can, all, against missiles, you can always use the, um, you can always use the chaff. But uh, torpedoes, you oftentimes just have to take because uh, there's very, very little chance of dodging them. You can try to play with the speed a little bit, but uh, yeah, oftentimes you're going to take the torpedoes. Now, there's the Italian ship, which is very low on, which is very low on, um, is sending missiles after me, so I am using the chaff because I I would not have been able to, to dodge those and um, getting myself underwater once again. Now you can use the missiles while you're actually diving, in the process of diving, but uh, that generally will have, the, uh, the only effect that that will have is that uh, uh, your missiles splash harmlessly into the water. So uh, once people have stopped shooting at you, uh, it's oftentimes a, good, oftentimes a good idea to just get back on the surface again because once again you can use both your torpedoes and your missiles. And I have the oil rig with me myself and the two carriers. So I just want to clean out that, uh, that frigate over there because that obviously has uh, is, is much more dangerous to me. So we've got that done. Uh, I did take a missile hit here but uh, that's something I can survive. And now we are shooting at, uh, shooting at the carriers and this is where it really uh, it's so like if you're not actually under air attack, but somebody is actively, um, and I'm taking another torpedo there that was launched earlier, someone is actively fighting these carriers off, then uh, it's, it's, it's a thing, you can do the damage from relative safe, safety because the carriers are otherwise occupied. The torpedoes being the main weapons against carriers, obviously. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, so that the Russian and Chinese carriers actually have uh, capabilities of defeating torpedoes and uh, the Nimitz obviously have, has the better AA but uh, if they are under concentrated fire you can generally just use the missiles as well uh, they they will get through uh, they, they, will, they won't get through on their own but they will get through if you can if you can manage to uh, get, get other people to distract them as well now I am coming under air attack so I am diving once again and you, uh, if you can time your missiles, pretty, uh, your missiles right, you can generally um, you can generally fire over salvo just before you're going di going underwater to be safe from things like air attacks. And there we go. And that's uh, we did. Yeah, 350,000 points of damage in that submarine with one kill. And uh, it's it's generally a relatively successful ship. Let's do another one. And in that one, I am actually. Playing in a division here, so we are playing in a in a five ship division with I think two Pantaleevs and a carrier, <laughs> and it is it is generally pretty mur murderous when we're going in going out like that. But uh, let's see where we're actually going to be spawning, and we are in Greenland. Uh, using using island concealment is generally a pretty good idea if you are having to defend yourselves against torpedoes. Okay, one of the carriers is over there. And I think I'm going to be spawning on the right side then, which means I'm on the two side with the carrier. Now, I want to let the carrier do the scout. And uh, my role here is to uh, stay out of, uh, initially stay out of vision range because we are having the scout advantage unless the enemy carrier is, uh, is on this side, but it doesn't look like. So we should be seeing 
We should be seeing the first radar contacts. Yeah, there's there there's a gravely, and we can immediately start uh, opening up with uh, with relative impunity, because we are not yet spotted. Because they don't have we we're going to try and stay out of spotting range and just start uh, launching missiles. And there we got two hits in on the gravely for forty thousand damage immediately. Now, my other role is obviously we're up against three ships, so my other role is to ensure that uh, the carrier is safe and uh, to make sure. Okay, there's a, the, the Nimitz is over there, so I'm going to drop some long-range torps on that thing. And then it's probably time, because I am spotted, it's probably time to dive and uh, uh, just, just make sure that, yeah, uh, there come some missiles in from the Italian, but uh, it's too late, so I'm just going to hit the water and the torpedo, I think, hit the, the island. So right now I'm just going to keep them stationary and prevent them from rushing our carrier because they will be running into my torpedoes if they're trying to do so. And I think the Gravely is just finding out the hard way that that's the thing. Uh, my torpedoes run into the island, but um, I think the Gravely is down at this point, which leaves only the uh, the Italian ship here. Which means that, okay, Nimitz it hits, on, hits on the Nimitz with the torpedoes and we've, we've actually killed two ships on the weak side. <laughs> on our weak side so far. So I'm just gonna surface back up uh, and launch some missiles because he is probably gonna be spotted by the carrier. And I am full health, so I can uh, I can do that. Okay, he's seen me, he's starting to shoot at me, so I'm, I'm diving, but just getting another salvo of missiles off before I'm going down, which both have hit and he's actually destroyed. <laughs> so uh, that just leaves the Nimitz and um, I am taking one torpedo here. Once again, there's not much you can do about the torpedoes other than getting islands between yourselves and that. But yeah, uh, playing in a five division with double carrier is um, <laughs> pretty brutal. Let me put it that way. And, and combining this ship with uh, with a carrier is actually a really, really good idea because you do get the early scouts on. And we still managed to uh, come out on top here and, um, you know, do a, do a reasonable amount of damage. Uh, yeah, the the Kursk is a very, is a very good ship in my opinion. Um, you do have to play her a bit more conservatively, so you don't just rush ahead. Because if you get... Uh, you don't have much capability in terms of dodging torpedoes. If you get swarmed by torpedoes, uh, there's not much you can do. You'll be, di you'll be dead. And um, But you, if you play her uh, conservatively in the beginning and at range, you can do a lot of damage before even being spotted. And you re re rely on your team to do the spotting for you. And then uh, when it comes down to the wire, you can still use your oxygen and go submerged and uh, do what you can from underwater. So this is a very, very good ship and it's a great, uh, it's, a, it's a great submarine to play in my opinion. I really enjoy this ship. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye.